my best memory of the workhouse was the very first time that I had to go deliver groceries for my father up to uh, a woman who lived up there, uh, Nora White. And I was only, I'd say, about six years of age, maybe or so, you know. And I wasn't very tall at the time, and the, uh, the nettles were actually taller than myself. I um, knocked on the door, and you could hear the hollow sound inside. And I knocked again, and there was nothing happened. But after a minute or two, I heard a, a noise from inside of another door opening. And feet shuffling down along the um, a, a corridor. And uh, then the door opened. And I'd, <laughs> I got a fright of my life. This woman was all in black. She had a, a, a beard and a black hat on her. And she had a sheepdog with a back on it as, 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 as like a Shetland pony now. This building was quite late in the history of the building of workhouses. It was built in um, 1852, so the Poor Law Act started, um, started the establishment of, poor, of workhouses in 1832. So this was built after the whole period of the famine. And it's not, it's not a unique building, but it forms part of a whole group of buildings that reflect the thinking, the social thinking at the time and reflect the history of what happened in Ireland and, and how people were dealt with and the, the way society thought at the time how to deal with social issues of dire poverty. The complex was laid out on a very simple H plan. The crossbar of the H equates to the church and to the refectory, the place where the people ate. Uh, to the right of the H you had the boys dormitories. On the right, further in, the other leg of the H you had the men's dormitories. On the left as you enter you had the girls dormitories and then on the other leg of the H you had the women's dormitories. The walls were there not to keep the inmates in, but actually to keep people out. Georgia, what precipitated entry to the workhouse? Well, there wouldn't be any clear guidelines, but obviously uh, people, uh, families in difficulty, if they had been evicted, if in the case, in some cases you had death, Typically, a family, a family unable to support themselves food-wise would be would apply to get in here, into the workhouse. And if you take a typical family of four, mother, father, son and daughter, they would be brought in, each would be admitted to a different block in the workhouse, and quite often never to see each other again. That was quite common in olden times. The one thing that the buildings can do is actually portray how those people that entered the workhouse felt. We do get some hint at how they had to live. We know that when they came to the main gate, that um, they were segregated. We also know that a lot of those people that came here were actually at death's door. They were starving. They were destitute. But we still cannot feel what was in those people's hearts. We can only imagine dormitory block. Um, this particular room is quite basic. There were very, very simple units. Long, narrow spaces. Uh, what you see here, what survives from the workhouse period, are the uh, sleeping platforms upon which the beds where the people slept. Now some of them may have slept in cots or they may simply have slept on straw mattresses. Um, the walls are, are just whitewashed. No plaster, just simple whitewash here. Whitewash, the lime whitewash was used here really to sterilise the place and I suppose brighten it up. The place was well ventilated. Air was taken in from the bottom underneath the sleeping platform. The stale and hot air rose and went back out again through the vents higher up in the wall. Ceilings were quite simple, just parged underneath. 
No ceiling boards, no insulation of any type, just simple power chain. The buildings were simple working units, just simple structures, very, very simple structures. No elaboration, basic necessities. The, of course, the whole purpose of the, of the workhouse system was to gather people who were in the locality who didn't have any work and were generally homeless and who weren't well clothed, and to bring them in, clothe them, put them to work, hopefully some productive work, and um, that that would relieve. It was a, a form of social welfare. Uh, the laundry building that we're in now is one of the utility buildings associated with the workhouse. And I suppose what survives here really is the outline in the, in the brickwork here of the boiler, of the large boiler that would have been used here by the women to boil the water for washing. And if you look at the room itself, you can see how it actually functions. You have the furnace here with the boiler in it. Under the floor here we have air being taken in from outside to fuel the boiler. And then overhead, a huge vent here to allow the steam out from the boilers. This room is where all of the laundry for the workhouse would have been washed. The women inmates in the workhouse would have been put to work here. The juices would entail washing all of the bed linen from all of the uh, other inmates' clothes and the clothes of the staff here within the workhouse. The job would be pretty much round the clock, day in, day out, with 600 patients in a place like Portona Workhouse. Washing would be a never ending task. The heating furnace still survives. What we see here is the furnace itself, the cast iron mechanism. The stoker would have fed, fed the furnace from the basement. The fuel was also stored in the basement. The flue pipe uh, exiting the furnace was carried right around the room and it was the heat that came off the flue pipe that actually rose through the grills to dry the clothes overhead. What's the work to, workhouse diet consist of? Well, the poor law commissioners were very keen to make sure uh, that the inmates in workhouses were not to receive a diet which was superior to what was available outside. So in 1842 they carried out a survey uh, to ascertain what typically uh, Irish people would consume. And as a result they came up with the idea that um, adults would receive two meals a day, about half a pound of stir about in the morning and uh, a half pint of milk and at lunch time, at dinner time, they get three and a half pounds of potatoes and a half pint of milk. Children were a little bit luckier because they got uh, three meals per day so they got a couple of ounces of stir about in the morning uh, with some milk uh, and in the evening time they got about six ounces of bread which wasn't available to the adults. So the whole idea was to make sure that it was far inferior to what was available outside. Because of the diseases such as typhoid and cholera that were endemic within the workhouse system, the infirmary was placed outside the ground plan of the general H block of the workhouse itself. This was obvious. You needed to remove all diseases from within the actual complex where people were, 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 were living.
I have seen many people with unremitting ulcers, not unlike a form of leprosy, but with sores that will not heal. They are probably related to their own poor state of nutrition. I have requested more food from the board, or at least that they divert exports to the workhouse, but no assistance is forthcoming. Clan Rickard has no interest, and I think he just wants to take advantage of the catastrophe and clear the land of people. Every day up to 50 people in dire need arrive at the gates. Half of those who have gathered outside during the night are dead, or die soon afterwards. <laughs> 